Hi, I'm Corey, and I'm here with my version of the 100 day project. I am doing what I call six by six and six, and it's taking six by six paper pads and using up the variety of papers that we have in these pads. Today's offering is a coin envelope. Um, I know, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but there's just a lot of different ways that you can use these coin envelopes. Um, coin envelopes have been around forever and ever, and, um, you know, we have different devices and machines that we can use today to cut them, but patterns and templates have been around for a long time. I think this one is dated in 96, and granted, it's much bigger than our 6x6, six six, but it's essentially a coin envelope is just taking a regular envelope and folding it a little bit differently. We might cut it differently or um, uh, cut one side a little bit longer than the other, but you know what? what is essentially a standard envelope-ish can be folded a little differently and made into a coin envelope. So, um, you know, something like that. Again, that's a larger one, but... Um, and then this one, uh, you know, you trace and you cut and such. And I'm going to show you something with this a little bit later. So, because if you don't have um, a score, a scoring tool, and you have one of these, I'll show you how you can use it. But um, you don't have to have any of those pieces to make this work. And I'll show you what I mean about that in just a moment. But it's a specifically coin envelope. And this is not dated, but it's probably from the early 2000s, late 90s, something along those lines. Um, there's also die cut um templates for your die cutting machines that do the same thing because there's so many things you can do with these envelopes and if you've got these awesome but you certainly don't have to have them to be successful with coin envelopes sorry about that um though there's a light above you so that you can see what I'm doing I apologize for the glare uh let's see if I can uh no sorry about that we'll see what I can do so um here are a couple different sizes of the coin envelopes, and I'll, I'll go through that as we're doing it. But for the eight, if you're going to use the Tim Holtz line, I wanted to offer that as an option, and it's the full eight by eight. I didn't cut this particular one down. I didn't cut it at all so that I could show you it this way. And it gives you a little bit bigger project, obviously, but if you're working with an eight by eight paper pad, um, this is what you end up with. A lot of the Tim Holtz paper is two-sided, and the only thing you have to think about when you're doing a coin envelope is when you flip it down, is your paper going to be upside down? And if that bothers you, choose a different sheet or um, make sure that when you fold it, you get the print in the way that you want it or the pattern in the way that you want it. So, you know, there's that option. This is a true six by six. The Disney paper pad was a six by eight, but I cut it down just so that I could show you the size of what we're making today and what it'll end up looking like. And it ends up being about uh, one, two, three, uh, just a bit over four inches and about two and a half inches. So four by two and a half gives you is what you get with your six by six. I'm sorry, I'm out of focus. Four by two and a half is what you get with your six by six paper. I get, I apologize. I'm, Probably a lot of this was out of focus. So here is your eight by eight. Uh, here is your six by six. These are the ones that I made with those little die cuts. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, this is the one that I made with the uh, Judikins template. Uh, that's what this end up size is being and it fits a business card. Uh, this particular one, it gives you a little bit different shape, but it's a just a tiny bit smaller than the one I showed you with the 6x6. Six six. So that's what you get here. And then this uh, little guy die cut gives you the small envelope. And again, you can put them in your planners, your traveler's notebooks, your junk journals, your scrapbook pages. You can put them on cards. You can do just about anything with them. One of the things I like about it is it doesn't have to just be scrapbook related or junk journaling related. So let's just say I made 25 of these or 24 of these, these simple coin envelopes using a pad of paper. I can do, um, I can put a hole in it, put on a jump ring and do it as an advent calendar. Or I can, um, you know, just give this as a little gift enclosure for a Christmas gift or a thinking of you type gift. So, you know, you have a lot of different options. It doesn't have to just be uh, 
junk journaling or planning or paper re paper related, I guess. You can use it for outside gifts as well or outside things as well. And um, different closures. That was the other thing I was going to talk about. I use a lot of the standard coin envelope co closures, but you certainly don't have to. This one isn't closed at all. It just kind of holds down. There's a little bit of adhesive on the back of the sticker and it kind of holds in place. Uh, that seems to work well. This one is just a circle punch and I have, um, I'm going to try angling it that way to see if that gets rid of that nasty circle. There's a light up above and unfortunately that just makes it tough. I guess maybe if I put my hand in the right spot, it'll hide it. Anyway, just this is just a little circle punch that's only glued, only glued down halfway, and I can tuck that underneath, and it holds the coin envelope down. Uh, this one I use just a Velcro dot. Uh, let's see, I put it over here so you can see it. Just these super thin, super inexpensive Velcro dots that you can get at Walmart. Um, they have thicker ones, but these thin sticky backed ones work really well. And I didn't want a button or um, an eyelet or a brad on here. So I just put the Velcro dot in the back and did what I wanted it to do. This particular one, rather than using brads to, to hold the circle discs in place, I used eyelets. Um, you know, pull from my stash and utilize what I've got, and just a bit of string to tie it down. Another change on this one is, um, if you look at some of these others, um, I just kind of squared them off. I didn't go down very deep. Uh, again, this one here, I just, this one came with a template, which gives you a bit of a from, is from the template, which gives you a bit of the curve, but um, the one I'm going to show you today doesn't have a curve, but if you want that, if you like it, you can easily put the curve into it. So you'll make it the exact same way, and then just get a circle template of any kind. It can be a cup, it can be um, an actual template, it can be your adhesive on your desk, whatever. You just... Um, when you've got it done or when you've got it folded, you just trace a circle and then give it a cut. You can use a circle punch too if you have the right size, but this was really easy to do and I had it handy. So if I want whatever's inside of here to be a little more accessible, I just cut that down. Uh, some Somebody will ask, so I'll say these are, these hand, this paper is a Tim Holtz paper that I just use a circle punch to cut out the clock, but the hands are quick cuts die that's uh, many, many years old. And I loved that dye, and so I try to use it every once in a while. So, um, okay, so what do you need to do this project? Alrighty, well, of course, you need your, let's see, am I in the right spot? Um, you need your six by six paper. And for this one, it really, oh, here, I'll use this one. It really is a good idea to use something that's not specifically directional, because then if you fold it wrong, you're, you're, you're still in good shape. So if I fold this against what I wanted, it might not look the same. It, you know, when you're talking about words or numbers, that kind of thing, you have to be more careful. But um, I just find it easiest to work with a pattern that doesn't have a specific direction. So you will need a piece of six by six paper, if that's what you're working, or a piece of eight by eight, if that's what you've got. Hey, my, if I leave that there, I'll get rid of that light. Um, a scoreboard is super handy for this. You don't have to have it, and I will show you really quickly what you can do if you don't have a scoreboard. But a scoreboard makes this super fast. Um, here is the plan B if you don't have a scoreboard. This is just a piece of chipboard, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch thick or so. And you can score on things without a scoreboard. You can use your Fiskars trimmer and use that guide, the, um, Rather than cutting it, you can use that guide as a, a ruler to measure things, but you can also just use a regular ruler, some kind of a scoring tool, and a piece of chipboard. That gives you enough of a give to get an impression, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Um, I used a corner rounder. You certainly don't have to. You can square it off, but I the, most of mine, let's see. Uh, you can see here on this one, this is squared off. I didn't round it, but this one, I rounded the corner at the top. Um, same thing, well this one was a template, it came came that way. Uh, here we go, this one. I just used the corner rounder on this to give it a, a bit of a smoother edge. And um, yeah. So, 
corn around her. You're going to need a liquid adhesive. You don't need much, but you do need a liquid adhesive. A ruler and a scoring tool if you're going to go the chipboard route. A pair of scissors. Uh, inking. I tend to ink most things simply because I like the finish it gives. So an inking tool. If you're going to go the disc route, what I do is I use um, two circle punches and I make my little own tab discs. I know you can purchase these, but I just use scrap cardstock. And let's see if I can get that in focus there. I use scrap cardstock to make my own. Um, if you're not going to use that type of a closure, just you know, a little bit of Velcro, Velcro tabs, uh, bone folder, uh, pencil, some just scrap bits of paper um, for your your to make these tabs. If that's what the route you're going to go. And then, um, oh, here, here's a coin envelope that was just ready-made. It's out of vellum, and um, I purchased them this way. But once you know how to make them, you don't even have to purchase them. You can just make them. And these are the measurements. This, this is, I'm going to try to put that in focus for you. So if I'm doing the six-inch size, and then I'll walk you through this while I'm doing it, it gives you this where you score, and then you turn, and then you score again. And then again, I did it again. Uh, Another option with the eight inch, if you're using the Tim Holtz paper and gave the measurements for that. And let's see, eight inch, you score it two and an eighth and five and seven eighths. Then you turn your paper, one turn, and you score it three quarters and six and a half. And that gives you this, this particular size. That's what that will come out to. That's your eight inch one. And then your six inch one will come out to there in case you, uh, sorry, in case you're wanting to see those measurements. And I'll keep this up here so that I can use it when I'm, you know, quick Andy reference, I can use it when I'm making mine. Okay, so those are the things you need. And I'm going to show you, um, I may go a little bit over my six minutes that I've allotted because I'm going to show you two. So you're getting a two for here. Um, okay. Let's see, I'm gonna try to leave, you know what, maybe I'll put this here and then we won't get that clear. All right, so six by six paper. And the way these scoring boards work is you push down and then you fold back. Um, and there's a hill and valley thing that I can never remember. But I just, I know that when I score it, rather than folding it forward, which would you think be intuitive, you actually fold it the opposite direction of where you made the valley. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm scoring at, uh, let's see, let me put my directions in here. Maybe I should put that up in there. So I'm scoring at one and five eighths and four and three eighths. Those are my first two scores. So one and five eighths, if I can see it. Oh, here we go. One and five eighths. And then again at four and three eighths, four and three eighths. And then I'm going to turn it. And I'm going to score at one and one eighth and at five and a half. And that gives me a quarter inch bottom tuck, bottom flap, whatever. And that's all there is to it. Um, I chose this one also because it's light on the other side and you can, I think you can see those score lines. Oh, I know what it's going to show you. So we scored down here. And that means the easiest way is you fold back. So rather than folding this way, it's easier to fold back. So I'm gonna fold this at those crease lines and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, so I'm gonna use the built-in crease lines and fold it. And I'm not gonna score it. Um, I use my bone folder to make it nice and crisp yet because I don't need to. Now I've used my whole six by six sheet. And I'm going to bring it in here, and you can see where those score lines are. I am going to cut out four itty-bitty sections of this, and I cut just inside that score line, or just above the score line. So I'm going to take out this little rectangular piece and this little rectangular piece, and that's going to give us our bottom fold. It's going to give us what is essentially this fold right here. I'm just not going to round it quite yet. Um, and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You're going to cut out this rectangular piece and this rectangular piece. And the reason you cut just inside those score lines is, so here is my crease, and I'm going to cut just to the right or just to the inside of that. And that will make it fold just a little bit better, and it won't um, 
it won't catch on each other when I fold it up. So I'm just cutting inside of that. And then the same thing, I'm gonna cut just to the left or inside, or outside, inside, yeah, of that. And that's my first cut. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And this will end up being my top fold. If you make a little mistake, it's not a big deal. This is a very forgiving project. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. So again, I'm gonna cut four little pieces out. And the last one. If you need to go back and cut a little more, it's not a big deal at all because we haven't glued anything down yet or we haven't folded, I haven't closed it. So I've cut those four tabs, four sections. And essentially, I'm going to fold it over, fold it over, fold it over, and fold it over. See, if I hadn't cut just on the inside, um, it catches when it folds and it gives you a little bit of bulk. And so, oh darn it, I didn't cut enough. It's not a big deal to come in and just trim it down a tiny bit. Um, if you want to round these corners, you certainly can, but you absolutely don't have to. If you're going to do that um, circle thing like I did on another one, you just come in at this point and take your pencil and then mark, you know what, let's just do it since we're here, why not? Um, you don't have to, you can glue it just like this and you're gonna be totally fine. But if you want it a, a curved scallop, you just uh, mark with your pencil where you wanna make that cut. Now, you can do it with a circle punch. I just find this a little bit easier. Um, and I'm gonna follow that curve up to the corner. And it's a, a, you can do it after you've glued it, of course, but it's just significantly easier to do it right now. I'm gonna fold that back to get it out of the way and cutting that down. Again, totally unnecessary step, but if you want to do that, this is the time to do it. Also, if you are going to add ink, now is when you want to ink it. It's just much, much easier and um, much quicker to do it now. You know, I should have rounded my corners first, but that's okay. I can come back in and do that at the end. That's a quick thing. So, ink to the edges. And again, do I want these squared the way they are now, or do I want them rounded? You can absolutely leave it this way, but if you want to round it, you can do it. You obviously can't round this itty bitty corner with a corner rounder with the flaps open. That's one of the reasons I close up the flaps when I'm building this, to make sure, one, that it fits, and two, that I can use my corner rounder and bring this piece in here flush and round those corners. And now I'll just re-ink those edges. And I'm gonna do the same type of thing to the top. I'm gonna to use the quarter inch. This this tool gives you two choices of one and a, excuse me, one quarter inch or one half inch. And I'm choosing the quarter inch on this. Larger ones, maybe I'll use the half inch, but for this project, that's fine. And I'll come in real quick with the inside and ink that edge. All right, so inking is done. I have rounded this out, but it doesn't line up perfectly. If that bothers you, just Open it up and trim it. If it doesn't bother you, leave it. You know, it it's, doesn't have to be precise. That's the beauty of this. You get a little bit of wiggle room and flexibility. If you need a little bigger, a little smaller, well, there you go. So, and it lines up, lines up, and lines up. Okay, so there's your coin envelope. I could be done right now. Just put a little Velcro dot there, glue in here, and call it good. If I want to use the discs, I'm going to grab those, and I'll show you show you how I do that. Um, what I do to make these discs is I get a couple circle punches and um, the size that I like. This one works well with the brads that I generally use. I make a couple punches in some heavier cardstock scrap. It's uh, 110 weight maybe. And then I'll take the second circle punch and I'll eyeball it. It doesn't have to be exact or perfect. I eyeball it and roughly, if you can see there, roughly put that in the center and then punch. 
And again, the same thing on the other. I roughly put that in the center and punch. Now, for the ones that I put on the outside, I like them double thickness. I glue, take two discs and I just glue them together because it gives you a little more heft and a little more stability when you're wrapping the string around. So I've already done that with these. I just doubled them up and glued them so that they're ready to go. So I'm going to put one here and one here. I can use my grid line if I want to and make sure they're absolutely perfectly centered. And that is an option, of course. But I'm going to eyeball it and call it good on this. And then I'm going to take my pencil and just make a dot and make a dot and I'll move those aside. And then I can use a pokey tool or I can use my hole punch. Um, I'm just going to use a hole punch for this one simply because it's easy. Oh, I can use the one I've got right here. I will, oh, if I can see that. Um, yeah, I'll line it up and put it right there. And down here, notice I haven't glued this closed yet. And I did that on purpose because it's so much easier to do this whole piece before you glue it closed. So I'm going to search for the, there you go. And I obviously didn't poke it through on this one. So now that I know exactly where my circle is going to be, I'm going to come through, use my pencil again, and I will punch that one out. I could have used a darker marker or a different color to make it stand out, but this is good enough. All right, and then I am ready to go. So now I will put a thin bead of glue just on the inside edge here where I want to glue it closed. You don't need a lot. This glue is pretty strong. And I glue it down. I'll hold it in place. Sometimes I'll, if I'm doing something else or doing multiple days, I'll put... Um, a stamping block on it to hold it in place while it glues, um, but you certainly don't have to. So notice I haven't glued the bottom yet, and I haven't glued the bottom for a reason. It is easier to work in here. If I'm gonna put an uh, eyelet in there instead of the brad that I'm using today, it is much easier to do it without the bottom closed. It just gives you a little bit more wiggle room. So, oh, the other thing I put in there was a couple of brads. So there are the brads. Um, I'm going to grab one of my double discs, okay? So double disc and a brad. And I put it down here. And then I work, go, uh, let's see if you can see it. There I go inside. And hold my brad down. Of course, it's a lot easier when I'm not trying to make sure I'm in, in focus on a camera. All right, so smushed, flat, down. Now, when I tuck a tag or a card or whatever I'm going to put in there, it's easy to catch it on the, the ends of the brad on my item, especially if I've got any embellishments or something. So what I generally do is I take a scrap of my cardstock and I glue it over that so that it doesn't catch whatever's going in. And I've already got just a little scrap of cardstock and I'm just going to glue that right on top of it. And again, because I haven't closed the bottom, it's super easy to do it and make sure I put it in the right spot. Oh, or I could just slide it right on out. And I put it down and hold it in place. And now, I don't know if you can see in there, but you don't have to worry about those tips of the, the prongs on the brad impeding whatever goes in and out. Okay, hold it for a socket until the glue takes and it's done. Uh, do the same thing on the top. My double disc, my brad, and I come through and put it down. Now, the prongs on this brad are fairly short, so I can come in with a solid disc, that's the same exact disc, and cover it up if I want. But sometimes these brads have a little bit longer prong. And if that's the case, you don't want the prong to stick out. I mean, you could leave it like that, but I would like, I like a more finished edge. So I'll get my wire cutters and I'll come in, if this was a bit longer, come in with my wire cutters and just take off the very end of that. It still holds it closed. There's still plenty of space, but it allows me the flexibility of covering it up completely. 
So, oops, I didn't snop that off hard. Okay, so that's that. Push down to make sure it's flat. And then again, I will just come in and I put, when I do this, I don't know how well you can see, I put glue on either side of the prong because I want to build it up just a little bit because the prongs have a little bit of depth. And this will allow the bread to be covered completely and not um, get in the way of the prongs, or the prongs won't get in the way of the glue. And it holds it pretty pretty tight usually. And maybe I need a little more glue. And to be honest, generally what I do to make sure that it sticks and it's where I want it, I grab one of my binder clips and I hold Push it down until I know that glue is in place. I'll just hold it like like that while I'm doing something else and it just makes sure that it's the glue is dry and it's where I want it to be and I don't have to worry about it anymore. So okay nice and tight and again it's clean so you don't see the um, you don't see the back side of it. Okay and you can see here I didn't line it up perfectly. I don't know what the heck I did. Maybe I didn't push it over enough. Oh here we go. There's a little bit of wiggle room in the um, in the circle hole punch because brads are a little bit smaller. So if it's not exactly where I want it, I can just push it over. So now this piece is ready to go. I'm finally ready to glue the bottom and I'll just put a little bit. If I were gonna do some kind of embellishment with a dimension or something underneath it, I would put that on and then I would glue this up, but for the sake of this. And again, I would use my block and hold that down while um, I was doing something else. So that is in place. And then the last bit is string. Just a little bit of baker's twine or some whatever string. I come up through the top. Uh, there's a bunch of ways. You don't have to tie it at all. Some people do, some people don't. Um, I like it tied because it's easy for me to remember which strand is the twisty strand or the one I wrap, I guess. So I'll tie this in a knot. I don't know why I feel like I have to make this so strong and sturdy. It's not going to hold anything, but, you know, maybe a receipt or ticket or some kind of ephemera. And then I can, maybe I can, I can wind it around here. And again, because I put a double loop on there or a double thickness on there, it's it's plenty thick and it's plenty sturdy. So there is your coin envelope. So that's the coin envelope with a scoreboard. If you don't have a scoreboard, I will show you what you got. Uh, maybe I'll show you. I put a piece of paper down. Oh, here we go. So you can do the exact same thing if you don't have a scoreboard. And I think you can see it all right here. So roller scoring tool, and then just a piece of chipboard. And I need to score it at one and five eighths and four and three eighths. So I put a paper ruler up here simply because I was lazy and I thought it might work well. So one and five eighths. So I go here one and a half, there's one and a half. So there's one and five eighths. And I can line it up on my grid background to make sure that it's mostly straight. It's a lot easier if it's straight, but if as long as it's mostly straight, you're good to go. So I am going to line it up and I'm going to score. And then the second one was four and three eighths. So four and three eighths. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line it up with the grid on the back, make sure it's mostly straight. And I'm going to score. And I'm going to turn it and I'm going to score it at one and one eighth and five and a half. So here is one and one eighth. The score pal just has the marks right on there for you and the score line, so it just makes it a lot faster, but obviously this still works. And then five and a half. And five and a half. Okay, and I'll pick it up so you can see. And then I do the exact same thing. So you can see here 
that you've got these score lines. I think they're showing. And again, remember you fold back. Oh, here we go. That's a little easier to see on this side. So it's enough of a give to give you the score lines that you want. And I'm going to do the exact same process. I'm going to fold, fold, cut out the corners, cut out the corners, and do whatever else I want with it. So there's another option for you if you don't have a score pal. Six by six envelope, day two of the 100 day project, and variety of coin envelopes. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a blessed day.